Three, two, one, and we are live. What is up, CP family? Chad here with Tim. Tiebreaker number 64. How's it going? We got a lot of questions in. For those of you new on the tiebreaker, this is a Q&A show. If you are in CP Elite, if you are in the blueprint, then part of the package that you gain accessing that program is you get to ask us questions and we answer them on this show. So thank you for all of you who are submitting questions. We've responded to a few of them personally um, and we'll, we'll talk about some of them on this show. If we don't get to your question, we'll respond to it via video, email, or text um, later on. Uh, Macy, I got your question about yourself and your sister. And I'm gonna have Andrew answer that, you know, that question in particular with a selfie video um, down the week. So we'll be getting that to you. A um, couple other questions in. Um, Gretchen, Ksenia's mom, had a, a great question on um, vegan diets. And I will give you a link. We actually had one of the leading, you know, nutrition doctors on the tiebreaker series several months ago. And he actually fielded a question on vegan and vegetarian um, nutrition diets. And I will get that video to you, um, probably repost that on CP Elite. It's somewhere in there if you keep on scrolling, but I'll either tag you or, or get that video um, um, to you. You know, short, the short answer to your question is, you know, you need to be getting, if you're an athlete spending four plus hours on the court a day, which you said in your question, if you're spending that much time on the court a day, like you're a serious athlete, you need to be getting three fourths your body body weight minimum three fourths your body weight in grams of protein per day. Um, if you can get your entire body weight, that's fine. So that's a lot of protein. And if and if you're not getting that um, protein number um, with your meals, you need to supplement with powder or a bar. And there is you know very good plant based protein you know, powders on the market as well where you can supplement. But really, it's about hitting that minimum number. Like you need to be, if you're not hitting that number, you're gonna be performing under a deficit. And if, you co if you're covering your bases, with, and same goes for water, just for everyone out there, you know, three-fourths your body weight in protein grams per day, and then three-fourths of water ounces, in a, you know, three-fourths your body weight in ounces per day. If you're just getting that, you're really covering a lot of your bases. You know, you can get, way in the weeds with nutrition and we do dive into that in that other tiebreaker so i'll be kind of reposting that as well and um, get that answer to you so we're um, looks like we're getting a few people coming on we'll give everyone a couple more minutes to get on here before we start the show and we're going to dive into kind of a continuation of last week's tiebreaker because we got a lot of you know follow-up questions on environment so we're going to kind of center our discussion around environment i know i ended last tiebreaker telling a story about growing up in the maddox household this is the original jar how old is this jar like oh geez I this think, is um, i think bethy was probably um seven or, or no i mean maybe nine nine or ten years old yeah so this is you know 20 years old these are the original signs like on the jar you know, this said this says the negative jar for five cents. I don't remember the shut up jar, but I guess you, you, we got fined. You know, five cents if we were negative, uh, and we also had the I can't jar, ten cent penalty if you said the words I can't, or if you said the words it's not fair. Now this is something I vividly remember growing up. Like these are the original jars that. I had growing up, Bethany had growing up, Andrew had growing up, Allison had growing up, and it was fostering this environment of positivity. And um, why don't you just expand upon like your decision? I know we covered a little bit on the last one, but you know, there's we didn't have these jars on the last show, so I wanted to bring them out. Yeah, I mean, I can't I can't stress enough how important your environment is mm -hmm. because honestly, your environment actually will shape your self image. And self-image is in direct proportion to what you can achieve, whether it's performing on the court or performing off the court. Right. Self-image is where it's at. In fact, there was, a, there was a couple authors that they wrote a book, um, and I think it was called The Answer. And in that book, they talked about um, negative uh, responses to kids. And by the time, it's, it's said in this book, by the time they reach age 17, 
They had heard 250,000 times that they couldn't do something and only 25,000 times that they could do something. So that's a really huge ratio. And you know, the thing about it is that we all have high goals for our kids, you know, to achieve high things and they can't achieve high things with low um, thoughts and low self image. The lower your self image, the lower the ceiling on what your potential, your capabilities are. The higher the self image is that you have limitless on the ceilings. The ceilings are lifted on what you can achieve as far as uh, bringing those capabilities and that potential out. And what's directly proportionally related to self image is what you allow and what's going on in that environment. And that's how, that's how powerful that is. Absolutely. And, you know, we talked a lot of the last tiebreaker on creating this environment, you know, for the kids and growing up, how important that is. But why don't you talk a little bit about environment for the parents as well? Yeah, you know, it's crazy is um, the, you know, as parents, you know, we, we, we really demand a lot from our kids and we want them to grow. We want them to change because they're growing up and they're um, they have a gr unbelievable potential, unbelievable capabilities. We want to infuse that and give those their opportunities so that they can go and achieve that. But the thing about it is, is that environment is so powerful is that I'm going to tell you this, they're not going to reach their capability with your current environment. You don't have enough know-how, enough knowledge to go ahead and reach those highest goals of what your kids are actually capable of. We don't have the knowledge. It's not in our environment. So what has to happen is that we have to bring in outside people into the environment. Nobody can go ahead to go to high levels of achievement, high levels of success without help. That's, that's like really obvious. Absolutely. And so here we are in our environment and what, are, what, what can we do then to go ahead and raise that level? We have to bring people in that are like-minded, that have, um, our best interests in mind, that have knowledge, that have wisdom, that have experience, that went down the road, that maybe have results that we think would be good for us to get. They, didn't just, they just didn't come out of nowhere. Those results, whether it was in their marriage, whether it was in their, in their family, whether it was their kids and what their kids accomplished, whether they, what they accomplished as far as prosperity and success in their business and their relationships, that just doesn't just happen. That happens because of your environment on what you allow in your environment. And we talked a lot about that last week about what kids need to do as far as changing that environment. And the thing about it is, is that, you know, we were just recently at a conference and in this conference, it was a, it was a pretty high level business conference, a real high level entrepreneur conference. And they brought out a couple kids and one was a seven year old and one was a nine year old. These are girls they are dressed up really pretty in front of 30,000 people and they put their mics on and they sat there and they confidently or stood there and they confidently, this one after another, not, they're not even going on, the, on it together. They're, they're, they're separate. First came a nine year old, then came the seven year old. So a nine year old comes up, what was the first thing she said? She said, I can do anything I set my mind to. And she just stared at the crowd. And you could hear a pin drop in the crowd. She had everyone's attention. Yeah. So. Then right after that, the seven-year-old comes out and the first thing the seven-year-old said was what? I can do anything. I can do anything I set my mind to. And then they go on and tell a story. And the story was, you know, it's not really important what the story was, but what the confidence and poise in those two kids speaking in front of 30,000 people, that was a direct re uh, reflection of what that environment is. And think about it. Could your kid go in front of 30,000 people, 10,000 people and play tennis? Are they ready for that? No, of course they're not. But they can be trained to be ready for that if that's the goal. Okay. You know that, that so the thing about it is we know that we have to change the environment. We know the environment's powerful. Last week we talked about the kids, it, um, some of the things that kids maybe need to do to change the environment. But the thing about it is, what this, girl, what this little girl was, was saying, the nine-year-old, is why is it that we as kids always have to make the changes and always grow and you adults don't have to? Yeah, she was basically saying that, you know, kids are expected to improve 
every day. They're expected to be better than they were yesterday. They're expected to progress in their math class. They're expected to, you know, learn their sport. Kids are expected to get better, better every day. And I guess the thesis was, and then the speaker came on after and says, why do adults stop? They did it when they were kids and then they stop, you know, getting better. Maybe they get comfortable. Maybe they, they get stuck in the same environment and they don't challenge themselves or change their environment themselves. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, that's not how it works. What our kids are watching us every step of the way. We're actually setting the example. In fact, we're the ones that are the gatekeepers of our environment. And we're also the ones that we're actually dictate the mood of our environment and the power of our environment because we're in charge. That's the deal. That's our responsibility. And so having said that it starts with us. And it starts with us making a change in ourselves, which automatically changes the environment. Think about it. If you don't have the expertise to go ahead and raise kids to the levels that you think they're capable of, how, what are you going to do? You got to surround yourself with, you know, the resources to make it happen. Because it's like if you're um, like, say your child has a really, really high goal, say it's division one or say it's professional. Well, just imagine them at that goal they would probably have access to resources in a, in a different environment than they do now. So you got to look forward to that and try to get them around what that would be like. That's, that's a, and that's exactly right. There's another concept, and I, I hit it on it a few tiebreakers ago, and, and it's actually uh, a universal law, and it's a law of like kind. And so the thing about it is that's a concept for another day, but basically what it is is that you're going to draw to you, that environment is going to be... Um, really established based upon who you are, what you believe, and that's what's drawn to you. In fact, my mom and my dad used to give me this saying all the time that birds of a feather flock together. And so you can't expect to have a high level environment when you don't have, um, or, or when you're not say committed to doing what you say you're gonna do and that support your kid in whatever dream they have. And so, because there's an action that goes with that. And that decision has to be made. You know, if I asked you or asked one of your, you know, say you asked your kids, last week when we talked about this in the tiebreaker, what change did they make from last week to this week? What change did they make? What change did you make that, that helped your environment? You know, if anybody wants to make a comment, tell me what change you made. And you know what? At the end of the day, if you didn't make a change, there's a reason why you're not achieving what you're going to be achieving because you have to make that change and it's got to be quantitative. You've got to be able to say what it is that I want to change, need to change and say, for example, say I need to have better relationships in my family or better relationship in my, with, in my marriage. Well, when's the last book that you read on that? What's the last person you got around that actually had a solid marriage or had a healthy family? and you brought them into the environment. Think about this, this is really crazy. Imagine that you're raising a family and you have kids and they have, they're gifted children, just like we have all in this community, we have gifted children. Absolutely. You know, we have unbelievable parents, gifted children. And just say we know that we need help if we're gonna let them get to their capability and to their potential. We need help, we, we, we need help, okay? And so there is a place out there that you can get that help, in other words, there's a resource out there that has the knowledge, that went the distance, that has the wisdom, that has the, the Rolodex of experts in relationships, that get up every morning living and breathing how we can help that person or that family reach their goals. And that's what the CP Elite community is. Absolutely. And for people that don't tap into that, you're not committed on your goal. Yeah. You're not committed on your goal because where else are you going to go? Where else would you want to find something? Could there be something better than that that will help me or help us with our kids reach their goals? Well, who else are you going to find? Someone that um, doesn't care? Someone that, you know, just wants to maybe take a paycheck and take your money? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody that really doesn't have the expertise, really doesn't have the knowledge. And I think that's something really that it, it's really important to answer these questions because we, there's a concept in the format of environment, and that's um, getting people on the same page. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we call it harmonization. So harmonizing, getting people on the same page, whether it be a goal, an aspiration, a dream, or a vision, 
and then doing what it takes collectively and individually to reach that goal. And it really, everybody needs to do a little soul searching and say, if I want help in reaching or helping me uh, personally, but you know, per with personal growth and also helping my family, my kids reach their goals, I'm going to have to get really serious about do I really want to do that or not? Yeah, because gotta, that's where it's at. Yeah, you got to search for it. They're out there. There's people out there that are that can help that you know yeah. do this and do it well. You know. Well, in fact, that's when they come. That's sort of a power of the universe. When you start making a commitment, and not just an intellectual one, but actually a real commitment to wanting to make the changes that will make allow you to go the distance on where you want to go in your in your in your dreams and your aspirations. The universe has a really crazy way of, of supplying you with those answers and with those people and those resources. And you know what? At the really highest level, even coaches, if they know you're not serious, they're not serious. On a real high level. You want to get high level coaches involved in your in your situation? Get serious. Start being committed to doing what you're to do what you say you're gonna do and let that energy come out and let that come out and permeate in those lessons on the court in practice and you're gonna or um, when you're talking outside in tournaments and you know things you're going after let your actions um, harmonize with those words and those thoughts and you're gonna find that in the universe you're gonna get people that are really serious and really knowledgeable on helping you it's crazy absolutely yeah absolutely I mean I know when when we're with people and training we have an athlete that's super engaged we're just like matching that engagement and then they, and it's just this energy that if you have a really unenthusiastic or non-committed player, well, we don't even let them in the program, but I'm just speaking in generalities, like it's really hard for a coach to kind of match that or like raise the level. Yeah, and, and really, that's really, think about it. If, if, you're, um, if you're not enthusiastic about something, why would, why would somebody else be? Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, that's really, really powerful to, uh, to understand Kind of how this law works Absolutely. and it just just by making a decision just by um, following through getting around the people the resources uh, that really can help it just magnifies the energy that allows you to continue down this pathway because it's a long pathway we always talk about it's a marathon it's not a sprint right and so there's motivation levels go up and down and things like that well who wouldn't want an outside force to come in with that energy that actually motivates yeah, I mean, and that's a big reason why we do this tiebreaker every week. Every t We don't want, you know, our program to be something that we just give and you guys just are on your own. Like, we want to be actively with you kind of every step of the way. And I want to read, I got an email this morning. I just wanted to share it with everyone because this encompasses why we do the tiebreaker. Um, like, exactly why we do the tiebreaker. So I got this email. This is from a player um, and this, I, I'm not going to read the entire email, but this is a portion of the email. And it says, um, um, let's see here. Okay, so it says, I, w <clears throat> I watched a tiebreaker series video about having an I am capable mindset and using that mentality to open the door to my potential. I've applied it to the exercises, tennis, my studies, friendship, and life in general. I'm finding it easier to just be myself and that positivity translates to the tennis court. So thank you for this program and all the knowledge and wisdom you're sharing. It makes a huge difference in my life. It's not, it's not only making me a better player, but a better person too. To be honest, I watch your tiebreak tie series on gratitude too. It showed me how blessed I am and how much I actually get from the program. Then I was like, well, I got to thank the team because I wouldn't be enjoying tennis and having all this confidence without them. So thank you. And that sums up why we do what we do. Like, <laughs> if you're a parent and you want your child to say something like that, get them on the, get them, get them on the tiebreaker. Get them on the program because these are some of the emails that we get. This is one I got today. I read it today. I got it a couple days ago. And that's kind of fuel. It's literally why we wake up uh, every day. And, 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 and that's and a player. And that's a player. How many, how many yeah. texts or how many emails we get from parents saying how they see not only the changes 
in their player, in their son or daughter, but how they change their relationship with one another. Yeah, and it's amazing. It's amazing. So th thank you guys, and, and, and parents, thank you for like giving me the opportunity mm -hmm. to work with your kid. Uh, because I have a job that I absolutely love because you guys uh, make it happen. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, and for everyone that submitted a question, thank you. Um, if you got more questions, let us know. If you have topic suggestions, you know, let us know and we'll base the next tiebreaker on that. Um, usually how we do it is if we see a common theme with the majority of the questions we're getting, that's kind of how we do it. And then if your question didn't kind of fall in with this tiebreaker theme, we'll get you on the side and um, answer a question, you know, offline or it'll be for the next tiebreaker. So keep the questions coming. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Um, see you next Tuesday, same time, same, same place. Love you guys. Peace. See ya.